A man is recovering in the hospital after being held against his will at a Brooklyn Park home. As Sonia Goins reports, the victim has severe injuries. Brooklyn Park police were called to the 6600 block of Ronald Place around 3 Tuesday afternoon. When they arrived here on the scene, they found a man who was bound with his hands tied behind his back, pleading for help. Police are still trying to figure out exactly what happened at the home. They got a 911 call from a woman who said that there was a man tied up and bleeding extensively in her front yard. Officers responded there, located the male, found out that he had been uh, taken against his will and being held at a nearby home. Police say the man was beaten pretty badly. They called in the SWAT team to search the home where they believe the man was held captive for more than a day. A SWAT team was called and ultimately made entry, did not locate anyone in the home but uh, they did locate evidence of the person being held against their will for a significant period of time. This is an ongoing investigation. No one has been arrested. If you have any information, call Brooklyn Park Police. In Brooklyn Park, Sonia Goins, CCX News. A man who crashed into a retaining wall in Brooklyn Center while driving drunk and assaulted a state trooper learned his punishment this week. According to court records, Matthew Cleave crashed on Highway 252 in Brooklyn Center. When a state trooper responded, Cleave tried to leave the scene, punched the trooper in the face, and then tried to take his gun. A good Samaritan actually helped intervene, allowing the trooper to make the arrest. Cleve received three years probation for the crime, which includes random drug testing and abstaining from any alcohol. If he violates any of his probation terms, he would receive more than a year in prison. It's a struggle every day. That's what one business owner told the Maple Grove City Council this week in speaking about the current state of the restaurant industry. Ten restaurants were called before the Maple Grove City Council after failing alcohol compliance checks. A cross section of restaurants and bars failed to ask for ID and sold alcohol to a minor. When called before the council, several managers and business owners accepted responsibility, but also cited problems connected to the pandemic as reasons why they slipped up on a compliance check. At the top of the list, new staff or lack of seasoned staff. Absolutely not making an excuse for what happened, but 80% of my staff members have less than a year experience on the floor. We are in a business environment that has changed immensely. Our business, our environment, all these people here tonight, there's a reason you have 10 people here that are, uh, um, that failed. The fine and the length of time a liquor license may be suspended varies depending on if the restaurant has had a violation before. There's a great need for affordable senior housing in Maple Grove, and there's a plan in its early stages that could help meet that need. The City Council approved a concept plan to build a four-story, 152-unit affordable apartment building for people ages 55 plus. It would be near Garland Lane North and County Road 30. Rents are proposed to be affordable to people with incomes at 60% of the area's income. The land was originally planned to be office space, but the city says the pandemic has changed the demand for office space in the area. A Plymouth woman who fosters disabled cats recently won a $15,000 grant for the rescue organization Biddy Kitty Brigade. CCX's Jason Malillo has that story. You gotta wait. Typically with special needs cats, you put them in a cart and they want absolutely nothing to do with it. But Snapple the cat gets around pretty good. So my interest has always been with like slightly disabled or perfectly imperfect cats. Chris Kaiser met her newest perfectly imperfect cat when he was four weeks old. I would say he's got a very sparky personality. Snapple is a tuxedo cat who has limited range of motion in his front legs and no balance. He saw a neurologist and the neurologist said it was brain and cervical spinal cord disease and there wouldn't be a treatment for it. Kaiser wasn't deterred by that diagnosis. She just committed herself to taking Snapple on what she calls mini adventures. Simple things like just going out and smelling flowers and watching flies and walking around the yard and even walking around the house. Like he helps do laundry. That's very exciting for him to watch me fold clothes. Kaiser's efforts earned her Arm & Hammer's Advocat of the Year Award and a $15,000 donation to Biddy Kitty Brigade. And I get a free year supply of cat litter. <laughs> and Snapple's Instagram account, more than 15,000 followers and counting, helped him find a forever home. An adopter from Hawaii will bring Snapple to the Rainbow State soon. He definitely hit the jackpot. He's going to get out of Minnesota in the cold winter and have a great life there.
Jason Malillo, CCX News. And now to an update to a story about a Brooklyn Park entrepreneur who continues to see his brand grow. Dustin Scholl caught up with Reggie Carter at a venue where he sells his dog treats. I grew up on a farm down south. We always had dogs. They're part of the family. So if we eat well and take care of our bodies, we should do the same with them. The New Hope Hy-Vee, uh, they carry the small pumpkin bone that I sell. Various breweries, as well as here on Leash Hounds and Hops. They do a Treat Tuesday where they give out my cupcakes to the first 75 guests that register. You can try any one. Okay, you guys want a treat? The market is flooded with processed treats. I just wanted to try to take that homemade, gourmet, fresh bakery style and just provide something for the dogs. <laughs> It's moving really fast to have the business going less than a year. It's going well. I'm just doing my best to keep up with it and keep these dogs smiling, you know. Oh, good boy. Oh, yeah, you really are. Yeah, I'm trying to find my niche area and just make some dogs happy. 12 days of Christmas, but in Golden Valley, it's the 12 brews of Christmas. Under pressure brewing is not only decorated for the holidays, it has put a spin, a holiday spin on its beer selection. Everything from a hot cocoa porter to a cinnamon gingerbread dark Belgian to a naughty can be nice, juicy New England IPA. Customers can pre-order or walk in to purchase. Both Champlain Park and Wayzata reached the state class 4A boys basketball tournament last season with the Trojans winning it all. Those two teams met up in a non-conference game Tuesday night. The Trojans looking to improve to 4 and 2 on the season facing the 0 and 2 Rebels. A good start for Champlain Park. Ethan Lukandwa with a dribble drive to the basket for two of his 10 points. The Rebels jump out to an 8-0 lead. Good ball movement here results in an open three look for Luke Graff. He hits, and Champlain Park is up 17-10. But the Trojans counter by scoring the next 11 points. Drew Berklin passes to a cutting Eric Roddinghouse for an easy layup. Jackson McAndrew then knocks down a three-pointer to put the Trojans up four. They lead by one at halftime, 25-24. Not much scoring for either team early in the second half, but Alexander Gamber does bury a three from the wing from the Rebels, tying the game at 30. Ayotaki scored 11 points to lead Champlain Park, including two here in the paint. But the Rebels score just seven points in the last 11 and a half minutes of the game while the Trojans take off. Carter Bierke hits for three, putting Whites out of up 10. Then Bierke gets a tip in off a miss by Hayden Tibbetts, Bierke leads all scores with 18 points. Tibbet steps in for a steal here and takes it all the way for a layup as Wyzetta pulls away for a 58-39 win. Both teams will play in holiday tournaments next week. In boys hockey, Maple Grove has been put to the test in a tough stretch of games. Jay Wilcox has more on the Crimson. They sure aren't ducking anyone. The third-ranked Maple Grove boys hockey team has already faced top-ranked Edina, number five Andover, and number 10 Centennial, with number two Lakeville South coming up next week. I mean, of course, we want to play the best schedule possible to get us ready in March. Um, playing teams like Andover and Blaine is going to get us ready for March and state tournament, so yeah. To be the best, you got to beat the best, so that good stretch of games is kind of going to get us going a little bit. and. Kind of get us ready for playoffs a little bit, because once playoffs hit, there's going to be no easy games, and we're going to have to be able to know how to win those type of games. So, Yeah, we, we've kind of hit the gauntlet now. We're going to have Andover, Lakeville South, and Vanilde coming up, and, and St. Michael, and then Centennial after that. So uh, I love our competition. I, it's, it's only going to make the boys better. Maple Grove entered the holiday break with a 5-2-1 record. They had to replace a strong senior group from last season's outstanding squad. Though it hasn't been all smooth sailing, overall it's been a pretty good start. We obviously got some things to change. I mean, I think we're playing pretty well, but obviously those small little things that we need to change is going to help us be a better team. Obviously we graduated a lot of seniors last year and, and uh, that's no matter what, that's a tough void to fill. So we're, we're we're a little bit uh, young, but yet we're, we, there's, there's players that have been in the situations and have played at that high level. And, and uh, 
So I, I think it's just a little bit of trying to get used to the team. In the week between Christmas and New Year's, the Crimson will skate at the holiday tournament hosted by Benilde at St. Louis Park Arena, facing three good teams in a row, starting with Lakeville South. It kind of brings us back to the when we were younger. I mean, back because through high school hockey, we don't really play back to back to back games anymore. It's a more game here, game there. But when we were younger, we could probably crank out like four in one day. So I mean, it'll be a good test for us. Maple Grove's become one of the elite programs in the state, and they aim to prove that they belong near the top. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jay. The Crimson face Lakeville South in the opening round of the St. Louis Park Holiday Tournament Tuesday the 28th at 4 p.m. Lakeville South was state runner-up last season, while the Crimson lost in the state semifinals. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson, and for all of us at CCX, have a Merry Christmas. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.